Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to another splendid episode on Rewired Radio. I'm your host, DJ Drew. And I'm Coral, your favorite event planner. And today's guest is one of the most dazzling wedding photographers, capturing some of the most impactful moments. She's also a certified business coach, helping clients and upcoming photographers start their own photography business. She's a creative entrepreneur in every sense of the word. From Orange County, let's welcome Sarah Yates. Yay. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm so excited to be here. I'm glad to have you, Sarah. So excited to have you. Definitely. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So as you already said, I'm a Southern California wedding. I almost said planner. Not planner. <laughs> you could be. <laughs> I'm looking for people to join my team. Mm, so. I'm definitely okay, but thank you. <laughs> Southern California wedding photographer and business coach. That's well, so awesome. It's an honor to have you with us today. I've heard nothing but good things about you from Coral. Yes. And uh, she seems to be a, bit, a big fan of your work. Oh. So I have to admit, I did creep on your website and it is so beautiful. Every page kind of tells a story, which was awesome. And I did read um, a line that was on there and it, you were, it said something like, I'm in the business to tell stories. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool because they always said a picture is worth a thousand words. True. So it was very, 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 I thought, thought insightful. Um, so I would love to know more about you and how you kind of started being a wedding photographer or just yeah. photographer in general, really. Absolutely. So I had absolutely no plans of going into wedding photography whatsoever, or even photography. Um, graduated in 2018 with a BA in interpersonal rhetorical communication with an emphasis in marketing. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah, so very <laughs> different path. Wanted to hit up the C-suite of some like HR world, you know, be some boss woman in a glass office was totally my goal. Got into a internship in marketing and absolutely realized I hated the corporate life, yeah. hated the nine to five. And I loved the idea of storytelling and truly being able to just tell different people's stories to the world was so fun for me, but I had no medium to do that in. I like kind of liked writing. I was a copywriter for a bit, but realized I'm not a good writer at all. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I can't do that. Picked up a camera and I was like, okay, maybe I'll like test this out. We'll see. Um, my then boyfriend, now husband, on my birthday in 2018 was like, hey, like here's a hundred bucks. Like you should invest this in your business. And I was like, what business? And he told me like, you should start a photography business. Like you're doing great with the few photos you've taken. I think I took like two photos at that point, like two different <laughs> sessions. They were probably so bad. Um, but within nine months, I quit my full-time job and became a wedding photographer, which is wild. So oh 2018 picked up a camera, and now here we are in 2022 with a full-time, you know, obviously wedding photographer, a team underneath me, and doing business coaching. So we have to credit your husband for getting you that camera. Honestly. The $100. You yeah. just yeah. give me 100 bucks. Camera. That's all right. I mean, that's what got you started. Exactly. Yes. All credit to Jeffrey. No credit. Thank to you, me. Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey, for creating Sarah Gates photo yeah. and create, making it Sarah Gates. I mean, that's not that's, that's not true. the original name. So. I know. Oh yeah, you probably had to switch that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'd love to check out some of your work. Actually, okay. we do have some photos. We'd love to check some out here of what you've accomplished. That photo was just so beautiful to start. Thank you. Yes, we love a good getting ready area. Um, so important for <laughs> photography. And good oh, spring so elopement. I know. That was up in Big Bear. It was so gorgeous that day. Oh, my gosh. Look at the light <sighs> behind them. Oh. I know. I think those are some of my favorite photographs I've taken. That was out in Joshua Tree. Oh, that's a good location. Um, no way. Did they jump in there? Yeah. So after their <laughs> engagement on a boat, they jumped in the water wow. for photographs. She took her ring off, thank God. I was oh, like, mm, nervous right yeah. after the proposal. Oh. I know. We love a good beach session. Yeah. At it one doesn't. point, I was branded as a beach photographer, and here we are again. Yeah. Oh, look at Coral, this is where friends. we met. This is where we met. This is the beginning of our beautiful friendship. Beautiful Hanson with my beautiful friends. Absolutely. Ah, sunglasses. So fun. It's a vibe, right? Yep, literally. And Cute. a good downtown San Diego elopement. San Diego, nice. that's where that is. Yeah, okay. it's, I think in like Little Italy area. So Cute. gorgeous. Oh, wow. <laughs> Looks like a party for it real. It was probably the best reception I have ever what been What is that, to. Silly String? Um, I don't even know what it is, but they're actually DJs now. So Get out. they can hang them? out with you. Yeah, they're a DJ, MC, married couple. Call me. How sick is that? <laughs> Wait, I love that. I know, so cute. And oh, Yosemite. Gorgeous. Because why not take yeah. photographs in Yosemite? Hit right. me up if anyone wants in to. In her wedding there. dress. In her wedding dress. Wow. There we go. Those are incredible. Thank you. Yeah. I tried to give you like a wide variety of different images. 
It yeah. was great. Okay. Totally. Yeah, beautiful. And we're so excited to have another photographer on the show. In our previous episodes, Coral and I have talked that there are three essential elements to every successful wedding. Isn't that and right, Coral? I think the trio is right here. We have a DJ, mm -hmm. a wedding planner, and a photographer. And we've talked about it many times. It's absolutely right. <laughs> so as a wedding photographer, I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there who um, might have some questions for you and might also not know where to start. And also there's there might be some um, upcoming photographers who are considering starting their own business. And that's what today's episode is about. We're going to talk about how to approach your wedding photographer. And if you're considering how to start a photography business, this episode's for you. Awesome. Well, I have a good question to start us off, if you All don't right. mind. Absolutely. Kick first it off. things first. Um, so let's say a couple is super nervous in front of the camera, which I'm sure you kind of get often. Yeah. Um, what advice do you tell them to kind of help in that situation? Absolutely. So twofold. Number one, I always recommend doing an engagement session with your photographer. Um, of course, you're going to get incredible images, but more so so that you can get to know them. They can get to know you. You just start to like vibe together. Well, so come mm -hmm. your wedding day, you're not like, wait, who is this like random stranger following me around all day? <laughs> Telling me what to do. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's number one. Make sure you book a engagement session with your photographer. Second is as the photographer, I just like to reassure them that like, none of us know what we're doing when we're in front of the camera. Like even now, like I've been in front of the camera hundreds of times and I'm always like, I don't know what to do. Like, where do I look? Where do my hands go? Same. So it's great. Right? It's mm -hmm. like you never get used to it. So mm -hmm. reassuring them that it's normal. Um, I encourage, you know, if they drink, have a little, <laughs> have a little, you know, shot or two or something. Relax a little right. bit. Right. Like just take a, take a chill pill, honestly, yeah. like we're, you're okay. Yeah. And also just, you know, taking the pressure off of them. I play music. I like to give them, get them moving around. You know, I start by just being like, you know, just like walk away from me. Like, just talk about your day. Like, and know that it's kind of awkward. The first like 10, 20 minutes in anything in life is kind of awkward. Like meeting someone new, doing a new thing is mm -hmm. always just like uncomfortable. So it's going to be awkward. And you know, within 10 minutes, you're going to be fine. And by the end of every session, they're always like, that was the easiest thing ever. Yeah. Like, that was so fun. I did notice that because I was a bridesmaid in a wedding when she was photographing it. And I think you told all of us, like, talk about your day or what you had for breakfast. Yeah. Or, and we were just like literally having mm -hmm. a normal con conversation. And you were like, okay, photos are done. And we're like, oh, that was it. And you're like, yeah, yeah. they look great. So you do something to just get their minds mm -hmm. off of being in front of a camera. Exactly. And I always say like you're in love with each other, not the camera. So do not look at the mm -hmm. camera unless I instruct you to because like how awkward is it if we're like walking towards me and you're just like dead eye, like looking straight yeah. at the camera. It's like so awkward. You so. like to make it look more natural. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely on the candid natural, but right. also making sure that they look good. They don't have like, you know, triple chins or their arm is like bent <laughs> backwards, like making sure they still look good while being candid. Yes, totally. Now I'm curious, question for you as a photographer, when you're behind the lens, and I'm sure you run into folks who are uncomfortable. Can you read their facial expressions? Can you tell if they're nervous or if they're excited? Yes and no. Some people mask it really, really well, and I can't tell. And, you know, at the end, they'll be like, wow, I was so nervous at the beginning. I'd be like, oh, I could never tell. But I always let my clients know. I say, like, hey, if I give you a pose or a prompt or something that, you know, you're starting to do and you start to feel uncomfortable or like this is not like how I would act normally – please tell me because you're going to look awkward and I don't want, you know, none of us want that. So it's, I can usually like tell the vibe. It's like, are they comfortable? Are they confident? Are they like not at all? Yeah. Um, and I like to sort of ask them, I'm like, is this your first time being photographed like professionally as a couple? And if not, like how was your last experience? Tell me about it just so that I can either do something that they enjoy or if they're like, oh, it was really awkward when they kept telling me to like move my chin or like kiss or do something, you know, that made <laughs> me uncomfortable. Chin. I'd be like, great, cool. We're not going to do that today. Mm -hmm. So it's really about just like understanding the couple, getting to know them. Yeah. And right. I like to be blunt, just be like, are you comfortable in front of the camera? Yes or no. If it's no, that's fine. That's my job. Right. Yeah. You're going to help them be right. a little bit more comfortable. And if they're not, then you give them good photos and it acts or it looks like they're comfortable the whole time. Exactly. And, and, most, most, and most of the time they are comfortable by the end. Yeah. They're like, that was so fun. Especially the grooms will be like, I don't know how I feel. Like, I'm grumpy. I don't like this. Aww. And by the end, they're like, I just got to make out with her. That was so fun. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, exactly. We love that. I mean, it's a big day, you know, when you talk about your wedding, you, both sides are usually pretty nervous right yeah. before it begins. I think after the ceremonies when they usually tend to chill out a little bit. Totally. But, you know, up until then, they're just, they've got nerves, you know, so you kind of have to help them just relax a little. Exactly. And that's why, again, I always push doing an engagement session so that Warm you up, know, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so come your wedding day, you're not like, 
oh, who is this? How do I pose? It's like, oh, when I say like do this prompt, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've already done it. Right. And you've already posted the photos of that prompt because I know you like it. There so you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, there's so many photography styles are out there. We just took a look at some of yours. But how do you know which one is right for you and your significant other? All right. So threefold, I'll go fast. <laughs> Number one would be the actual images and editing, kind of what you are drawn towards. So you have like light and airy. So, you know, very bright, very, um, you know, true to life colors, but just accentuated in the lighter way. Second would be the dark, moody, sepia tone, you know, that more like warmth and depth. And then the last would be like very true to life color, bright color. Um, so kind of figuring out which editing style that you and your partner prefer. And then I would say next would be, do you want someone more documenting the day? You know, as the fly in the wall, like kind of just like taking some photos here and there and being quieter. Or do you need someone like in your face, like posing you all day long? Mm -hmm. Like how involved do you want your photographer to be? Because Again, there's no right or wrong answer mm -hmm. um, in any of this. It, yes. And photography, I'm sorry. Lighting, <laughs> so good. Yes. <laughs> lighting probably plays a crucial role, I mean, in each oh, yeah. of those scenarios, right? In those three you just mentioned? Absolutely. So for a lighter, for a darker style, how much of a role does lighting play? Um, darker style, I've never really touched too much personally. I'm usually more to the true to life, but mm -hmm. usually all three photographers can work with natural light, you know, fake light, whatever it is. If you're hiring a professional, they should be able to work with whatever and still edit and make it still look seamless. So I would say just make sure you're hiring someone who knows what they're doing, regardless of like style. Sarah. Yeah, like, like Sarah. Sarah. at Sarah Gates Photo. Yeah. <laughs> um, but lastly, I would say just make sure that you get along with your photographer. Mm -hmm. Do you want someone who's you know, personable? Do you want someone more professional? Like how, like who do you want on your wedding day? Again, you're spending so much time with your wedding photographer. Yeah. Like you have to make sure you like them and get yeah. along with them. Basically all day. Literally more so than if you're not doing a first look, you're definitely spending more time with your photographer than your partner. Like they're going to be on the dance floor with you also. Right. Taking photos of you guys. Literally all day long. Do you get down on the dance floor, Sarah? Oh, oh she does. She does, right? And she Absolutely. was B-reeling with us too. We did. That Remember was like that? right around B-reel. It was so fun. So we um, were at the wedding and I told you about B-reel, which is like kind of like a, a mixture between Snapchat and Instagram. Yeah. You take a photo. It's very natural. No filter, but it's right then and there. When we were at my friend's wedding, it was when we were on the dance floor and we're like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Yeah. And all of us had our phones out when we were taking photos. Yeah. That was and you so had photos of us doing that, which was awesome. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I did. I, I like took that. mine really quick, like on my Be Real, because I was like, oh, I'm at a wedding. This is pretty sick. Yeah. And then also, yeah, took and like real took photographs. Us, like, <laughs> taking selfies. Yeah. That was, that was so awesome. Fun. So fun. I love seeing vendors on the dance floor, especially the photographers when they're dancing. I'm oh, doing yeah. my job. Oh, yeah. Oh. I've gotten thrown in the like dance circle before and it's the best i i love dancing i'm not good but i love that's it. all right that's okay so, you don't as long as you're having fun as yeah. long as i'm having fun and if and i read the room too if the couple doesn't want me on the dance floor i will not be shaking my butt on the could dance you floor. imagine they're like what they're is like, she ew. doing <laughs> uh yeah well, read the room yeah i don't think i've ever been on the dance floor dancing as a wedding planner hmm. no maybe i need to we need to change more that. Off to the side i'm more off to the side that's true making sure you're prepping right? stuff Cleaning yeah. stuff up. I'm like looking at the time. Okay, what time we're doing cake cutting? <laughs> oh, you have four more minutes of dancing. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, on the wedding day, I have a question for you for shot lists. Yes. Do you recommend them? And if so, what's super important a couple should put on theirs? All right. So again, twofold. Number one, family shot list mm -hmm. is something absolutely please create a family shot list. I personally, with all my clients, work with them individually and creating this. I send them an example of literally my whole family. I write it out for them and say, copy paste your family. Like oh, literally write their nice. names, relationships to you. And then I will take it, reorder it if necessary. And then that's on my phone on the day of. So I can be like, check, check, check. Yes. Um, but as far as other shots go, I would just say if there's something really important that you want, like, hey, a first look with your dad or, you know, the ring box you have is really important to you. Just make sure you communicate that with your photographer because mm -hmm. if they don't know, they, you know, it's like, what are the odds they're actually going to take that photograph? But if you mm -hmm. send them a list of photos that are important to them and their partner, absolutely, I will take that photograph for you. But there's no need to like create a list of like bride with each bridesmaid. Like I will take that photograph or yeah. like bride and groom. Totally fine. Like, <laughs> like I will, <laughs> No way. Shocker. <laughs> like, I will take those photographs. Um, so just making sure that you communicate that with your photographer. But if you book me, we'll go over all of that. So don't worry oh, look about at her. <laughs> That's awesome. So I know that there's so much going on during a wedding mm -hmm. all at one time. And it might be a little bit difficult for you to capture everything at once. Yeah. Do you bring a second shooter? And if that's the case, what is the role between the two of you? Okay. 
This is, I have a very strong opinion about this. Ooh, I, I bring, love it. <laughs> okay, good. I bring a second shooter to every single wedding I photograph. In my packages, it's absolutely included. It's not an a la carte option. I need them just as much as my couple needs them. So I need them just in case, you know, say my camera falls and breaks. Now I have a second shooter that has all the backup. I mean, I have my backup gear. Don't worry. But like, right. they're just there. If I sprain in my ankle or like mm-hmm. break a leg, literally, again, none of this has ever happened, but hey, just, maybe on the dance floor, you never right, know like, next time. <laughs> well, hopefully not. <laughs> like they are that security of just making sure we have backups on backups. on. So backups. it's essential. You have to bring it, a second shooter. You have to. Cause yeah, think of your photographer eats lunch, comes to your wedding and gets food poisoning. Like if you don't have a second shooter, who is going to photograph your wedding? Mm-hmm. Like literally, I don't know. It just boggles me when people don't bring their second shooters because of that. So please book a second shooter. Please, please, please. Maybe I should bring a second DJ with me in case I fall, break my leg. I have somebody to take over. That's true. I mean, you never know. You yeah. just, you never know. And yeah. I don't know. That scares me. So that's number one. <laughs> number two is just two is better than one. If you and your partner are getting ready in separate locations, it's so much easier to have like me go with the girls and, you know, like my mm-hmm. second go with the guys or however it works. Um, you know, whether that be the same venue, two different locations at the same time, or, you know, two different Airbnbs, we've had all those situations. Mm-hmm. So just making sure that a, they're there for literally security of photographs of having a photographer there just in case something horrible were to happen. And second, so that you're getting different angles, you're getting different mm-hmm. moments, you know, while we're taking family photographs, I usually have my second go to cocktail hour and photograph that. So people, you, you know, get those guest reactions and conversations happening. So mm-hmm. I could go on forever, but Please book a second shooter. Always. Two is always better than one. It's right. all so much. Sometimes I'll even bring like an assistant to the third one. I feel like it's a really big wedding yeah. just to like have that security of a third person. Bring the there. third wheel. Yeah, Did absolutely. Did you have three for Sam's wedding? I feel like. No, I had, oh, it was video. Just, we had video, but they also had a second videographer. So that's why I felt like it was so many people, but that right. was awesome because they got all the angles. And I've noticed yes. too, as like a wedding planner, let's say reception is complete, but you're still not done with like sunset photos or right. romantics. Um, that second shooter can run and take some shots for you yes. really quickly and you can go and do a wide angle or whatever when time comes. Exactly. But if, if you run out of time, you have that extra person saying, okay, run to reception. You know, I'm still here taking photos. Like, go do that for me. Right. When you don't have to, like, run and break your ankle doing that. Exactly. Yeah. And then just always make sure that whoever you're hiring, their second shooters aren't just someone from, like, a Facebook post or kind of mm. someone off the street because sometimes photographers will grab, you know, new people and just train them or bring, like, um, you know, significant others who have no idea how to work a camera as a second shooter, but it is just so important that they are a trained professional who know what they're doing in case something were to go wrong. Totally. Don't hire your cousin who just has a camera but has never shot no. a wedding. Um, please don't. <laughs> please don't. Is that, what what is that what you're going to do? So I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, now we're going to photo. Yeah. Just, yeah, right, exactly. Book our team. Yeah. Well, you said that a second shooter is included with right. all your packages. What yes. does come with like a standard package if someone was looking to book you? Yeah, such a good question. Every photographer is different. For me, it comes, I have two packages basically based on time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just make it simple. In my mind, there's so much pressure on you know, the couple getting married that I just want to alleviate that stress. So for me, I don't have a ton of like a la carte options. It's basically like you have two options. You have a seven hour package and a nine hour package and you can add on hours if you want, you know, after that. But those are the kind of the two that I realized start people started to book. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that come, you know, either seven or nine hours of package. You can, the only thing I have on is like, you can add the engagement session on, but I also don't want to ever pressure someone to be like, you have to take extra photos. It's like, no, no, no. If you really hate photographs. We do not need to do an yeah, engagement session. So it's session. an add-on. So it's, it's not included. That's an add-on. Got it. Um, just for personal choice and preference. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if we travel a lot for weddings. So if we're not, you know, in Chicago during the year, but your wedding is like, I'm not going to force you to pay for an engagement session that we right. can't even make happen. Right. Um, but besides that, the second shooter is included. We do about a hundred photographs per hour delivered. We try to deliver it, I think within, you know, a month of your wedding, making sure wow. you're getting all this edited images, um, through a digital gallery and then also a USB drive because we all just need those thumb drives sitting around somewhere. Yeah, we do yep. have a ton of them. Yeah. <laughs> You so it's really know. based on hours, really. For me, yes, personally, every photographer is different. Some, you know, have like a second shooter as an add-on. We'll mm-hmm. have different kinds of sessions. You know, I have like the Yosemite photo we saw was a day after session. So we drove up there after their wedding and photographed that. And you can always add something like that on. Um, but yeah, every photographer is completely different mm-hmm. with that. And there's not a standard, I'd say. 
but just make sure you know what you want and you can always add things on. We always ask, I'm pretty sure it's industry standard throughout everything. It's Mm -hmm. like, don't ever like subtract services. Like that gets a little tricky, but feel free to add on an hour. Feel free to add on an engagement session, like whatever you need. Yes, totally. Absolutely. Um, So not only are you an amazing photographer, but you also help people start their own businesses. Yeah. Can you elaborate a little more on that? That's so cool. (laughs) Thank you. Um, It all came out of my love for business side of things. I love being creative. I love, you know, photography. But deep down that like marketing, you know, guru inside of me, I still love like marketing, copywriting, all those things. So um, a few years ago, I decided like, hey, I also want to start helping other people become photographers or grow their businesses, you know, wherever they're at. So I have different, you know, digital products. I work with a partner and we sell that. So you know, if you want to take a course on getting into photography or, you know, we have like email templates, things like that, that people can purchase. I have presets for like photos. So really just assisting photographers in that way, but then more so doing business coaching, which is so much fun. I have a session after this podcast. So I'm so excited. So how does that work? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. So basically it's a three month program where they, we have two sessions a month, you know, just through zoom because, you know, why get out of your pajamas when you can be on zoom? (laughs) Seriously. Zoom is the best nowadays. Right. I love it. So we meet with them twice a month for three months and I send them a super detailed questionnaire at the beginning that goes over, you know, where their business is at, their pain points, where they want to grow, what they, what they think they're already good at. And then we just dive into it every single session. So mm-hmm. every single coaching session for me is completely different, but by the end, if they can say that their business has grown and they are, you know, a completely different place than they were when they started, that's it. Like that's the goal mm-hmm. for me. How long does that usually take before their business starts to grow? You said it's a three month program yeah it's a three-month program you can always like add on again add on more months um i would say it all depends where someone's starting and how much time they have to grow their photography business again i went full-time within nine months so it's possible but at the same time like people can take it slower you don't have to go full-time in photography you can always do it part-time there's not an end-all be-all it just all depends on where you're setting goals and how fast you want to reach them that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm so like amazed at how you're able to connect and not only do what you do, but also help others as well. Um, so like in terms of like marketing, just curious, like how do you help them market their business? That's a really, you have to take the, yeah. the three month class. Okay. Well, yes, but I'm just curious. <laughs> like, like, give us a small tip. Yeah. Um, it all depends on what they're already doing. So I love to evaluate where they're at with their marketing. You know, are they posting consistently on social media? Do they want to be posting consistently? I dive so much into email marketing. I'm a huge fan of um, like drip campaigns and all this like crazy detailed marketing with the email world um, because that's something people don't like to touch that often. So I just always like to say like we need to find where you want to market and go from there. Like if you hate social media, great. Let's try to find, you know, a referral business. Let's Mm -hmm. do emails. Let's not do social media. But at the end of the day, of course, social media is where we can get so many referrals Especially and clients. Especially for photography. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah, they have to yeah. see your work. It's yeah. honestly, being a wedding photographer, like, you can do it. Like, that's why I always encourage my clients and my students. They're like, I want to try. I'm like, no, 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 there is no try. Like, you can do it. You can like, do it. Like, it's not that hard. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of work. Like, I'm not trying to discredit everything I've done. Yeah. But, like, it's hard. Can, <laughs> it's hard. It's a lot of late nights. For it's sure. a yeah. lot of blood, sweat, a lot of tears, but like yeah. you can do it. I don't know. I feel like if I, was, I always say like, if I can do it, you can do it. Like it's, yeah. it's, you just have to put your mind to what you want to do. That really go goes just with everything. It literally. Yeah, yeah. Really. You just can't have the self-doubt win ever. Mm-hmm. What's your, I guess, major advice that you would tell someone if they're super nervous to kind of like take that leap into being a business owner or a full-time wedding or not even wedding, just photographer yeah. in general. Is there one like tip that you tell them or? Two things. Two. Be, number one, just start. Like you just have to go just for it. Just do it like Nike says. Right. Right? Exactly. Exactly. We're not sponsored like by Nike, Nike here. No. Unless they want, want to. Nike if you're listening. Yeah. Hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, like just start. Just start posting your photos. Like don't let, um, you know, the fear stop you from doing that. Just go for it. Mm-hmm. The second thing is, especially with photography, my mom always said this to me growing up with piano and I hate it. She'd be like, practice, practice, practice. I'm like, mom, shut up. Like mm-hmm. I hate practicing. That 
I stopped practicing. I suck at piano. I can't play piano now because of that. Like I didn't practice, but photography is something I've practiced consistently going out, doing free sessions, Mm -hmm. you know, getting, I literally took photos of a dog at one point because I was like, oh, I need to work on my lighting. Great. Here's this dog, you know, at the apartment I have like, great. I'm going to take photos of it because like, I just need to practice. Like whatever it is, you just have to start and you just have to practice and you can do it. Even if you don't have any events or anything lined up, just no. go out there, take some shots, go to the park. Mm-hmm. Literally, I take always- Take some shots of nature. It, you just have to start. And if you want to get into couples, go ask your like cousins or your there friends you who are married or your mom and dad, like whoever, mm-hmm. you you know couples in your life, like mm-hmm. just take photos of them. Just start. Free headshots. Free headshots. Literally. Mm-hmm. I did that for the business I was working in at the time. I like was their marketing girl. And then I was like, also, if you want headshots, like let's do this because I needed to practice. Yeah. And it worked. Right. Clearly. Nice. And you get so. and you get content. I think that's the most important thing. Yes. 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 Literally. And not to like push a course, but I have a whole course about <laughs> literally creating like your um content, like how to start, how to literally reach out to a friend who, you know, is married or dating mm-hmm. and say, like, hey, I want to take photos of you guys, but how to actually use that to then create a whole entire business. Like we talk about that. We it's not that hard. You can do it. Yeah. You just ask ask for like advice and help and just go for it or call sarah and she'll put it all together yeah. for you guys Literally. exactly sarahyatesphoto.com <laughs> there you go i love it i was actually gonna say so if, if they wanted to find you out there sarahyatesphoto.com and then instagram same thing sarahyatesphoto Sarah it's Easy. everywhere there you Easy. go so if you're planning a wedding planning an event want to hire a photographer sarah's your gal if you're wanting to start a photography business oh, look no further look at that cute look at website that. that i'm Aww. obsessed with there we are seriously it's so, so cute. cute. I'm obsessed too. I love it. So I know. Thank you. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, go awesome. hit it up. Yeah. Very creative, Sarah. Oh, thank you. So as you know, our guest of honor always makes the toast oh, at mm-hmm. the very end of With the show. With our apple cider. <laughs> <laughs> this is not champagne, folks. <laughs> yeah. It's so good though. Um, But yeah, if you can please do the honors. Oh my God. I've never, well, I guess I've been a maid of honor like a few times. So I guess I have oh. made a toast before. Oh, you're professional then. Okay. <laughs> well, cheers to us. Cheers to this podcast and cheers to all the couples that we get to serve in the years, you know, to come. Yes. So cheers. Good one. Cheers to that. Cheers. Right. Sorry, Jared. <laughs> all right, folks. That's On easy. that note, and with our apple cider here, bid you all a good night and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>